Okay, so in this video, we're going to address a very specific problem. Why do I keep getting electricity questions wrong? So regardless of what level you're studying circuitry at, um, a lot of people find circuitry problems very challenging because they often involve a large amount of problem solving alongside knowing the general physics stuff. So they can be quite tough questions. So we'll have a look at some mistakes that people make so we can avoid those in the future. Okay, so first off, uh, where are these mistakes occurring? So the first three um, will apply to all levels of physics, GCSE, A level, pre U, whatever it is you're doing, these are mistakes you see all the time. The last one more is more appropriate for the higher levels, it's not a skill that's particularly required at GCSE, um, so that's kind of the pitch of these. So first one uh, is a absolute pain uh, when you're marking work because I see this all the time the rule that people use current is the same in a series circuit and I'll show you where that goes wrong uh, misusing the potential divider equation we'll take a look at several examples of where it gets misused and how it should be used um, when we get onto sensor circuits like using LDRs and thermistors uh, people often try and use current to explain how they work which leads them into all sorts of trouble so we'll take a look at that and then finally we're going to look at a really powerful tool in solving circuit problems redrawing them uh, to make them simpler so again we'll look at that too okay. so let's start off with um, the idea that current is the same in a series circuit, where it's correct to use it and actually where people use it and it gets them in trouble. So on the left, a correct use of current is the same in a series circuit. So we've got a series circuit here. We can see there are no junctions where it splits off into a parallel loop. We've got, definitely got a series circuit. What would the current reading be on the other ammeters? Well, you can see that the ammeter on the left is reading two amps. It's a series circuit, so all the other ammeters should also read two amps. The same number of charges per second should be passing through every point in that circuit. That's a correct use of it. On the right, here is an incorrect use of this law. What would the current reading be if a variable resistor were increased? So what people do is they say it should be two amps because the current in a series circuit is the same. And I see this all the time when people are answering exam style questions and it's just plain wrong. And let's see why. So. Okay, we've got a QI Claxton, we've done something horrifically wrong how we should have done it correctly. So the way we think through this is we go, okay, the variable resistor has increased. So what's happened is if you increase the resistance of the variable resistor, the total resistance in the circuit has clearly increased. Okay, so then we go, well, current in the circuit is going to be the potential difference divided by the resistance. So if we've got the same EMF source, in this case a cell, and we've got a bigger total resistance, the current is clearly going to decrease. So it's going to be lower than two if we increase the resistance. Now, would most of the people who answered the question incorrectly first be able to figure this out? Yes. So the problem is that they just didn't spend enough time thinking about it. They just tried to give an answer straight out of their head instead of actually thinking it through and reasoning out what would happen. Okay. So there's a fairly simple explanation, but you do have to reason it through. Let's move on to the next incorrectly using a potential divider equation. So let's quickly have a look at what I mean by a potential divider equation. And we're actually going to look at where it comes from. So then we can start to understand where people start misusing it. So let's take a circuit we've got here, uh, which we could definitely use a potential divider equation on, um, but it requires a few more steps before we can. So first of all, what would the potential divider equation be? So if you want to know the potential difference across R1, we could calculate it using the current passing through it, which in this case would be the same as the current going through your cell, and multiplying that by its resistance. So that's how we could calculate it. How could we actually figure out what the current is? Well, what we could do is we could do the total potential difference, which would be the EMF of the cell, and we could divide that by the total resistance of the circuit. That would figure out what the current passing through the cell is. So if you put those two statements together, what we can do is express V1 in terms of the total potential difference, R1 and the total resistance. Okay, And that's our potential divider equation. It essentially says that a resistor 
takes potential difference in ratio of its its resistance over the total resistance that's what it's really telling you okay so that's our equation and we'll come back to this st stage a bit later on to see why one method goes wrong okay so let's see one uh, way of solving this that I see quite a lot. So let's say we want to get the potential difference across the 5 ohm resistor. So we've got the same circuit but now with some values. So what you see is they calculate it like this. So you can see they've got the EMF or the total potential difference, 10, fine. They've got the 5 ohm on the top line, fine. And then they've added all the resistors together on the bottom line and they've ended up with 5 volts or half the EMF. Okay. <laughs> So first off, that is wrong, but why is it wrong? Okay, so the problem is the way they calculated the total resistance of this circuit. Because they've got a parallel section, you don't just add all the resistors together to get the, the total resistance. What you have to do first is actually turn it into a series circuit. So we use our parallel resistor rule to calculate the resistance of the parallel section. So this parallel section has a resistance of 0.6666 blah, 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 blah ohms. So we can redraw the circuit so it looks like this, and now we can use the potential divider equation. The potential divider equation is only designed to work in series circuits. So we have to turn it into a series circuit before we can apply it. And now if we plug our numbers in, we should be able to correctly calculate our potential difference in the circuit. Okay, so that's one issue. Potential divider equation only works on series circuits. Let's have a look at another situation. So let's say we want to know the potential difference across the 1 ohm resistor. So what a lot of people will do here is they'll calculate the combined resistance of that section and that's great. So they've got their bottom line now correct, that is the total resistance, but they put one on the top line of this which is not correct. Okay, so this again has got an incorrect calculation. So what should it have looked like? Well the first thing to explore is actually why didn't that work? So the key is this stage in here in the method for coming up with a potential divider equation. So in this one, to get V1, we should have actually had the current going through resistor one. It just so happened to be the same as the current through the cell. If we want to do it for R3, however, the current is not the same as the current through the cell because it's split up to go through R3 and R4. So actually the potential divider equation wouldn't be valid if we put R3 is equal to one into our expression. So that's why it doesn't work. So let's actually see what we should be doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to this circuit, our series circuit, where we've calculated the combined resistance. Because now we have a series circuit, we can work out what the potential difference is. So what we should have had on the top line is the 0.666 blah, 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 because that is the combined resistance of that section. This is now a series circuit where the current is the same all through the circuit, and we can now apply the potential divider equation to calculate a potential difference. Okay, moving on to ex explaining sensor circuits and showing the problem with using current to explain what's going on. So this is a very standard circuit. This would be a circuit that allows you to automatically turn on a light bulb if light intensity drops. Okay, so an explanation of this I often see would look something like this. So it starts off well. So you go when the surroundings get dark, the light intensity on the LDR drops and its resistance increases. Great so far. Then what they say is, therefore, a larger share of the current passes through the light bulb, causing its brightness to increase. Okay, so let's explore why that is a problem. So my explanation of this is going to start off very similar, but there's a big hole in the argument we've just used. So increasing the LDR resistance is going to cause the current from the cell to decrease. Why? Well, we've made the resistance in the circuit bigger. So we're going to draw a smaller current from the battery. So even though the bulb definitely gets a larger share of the current now, I am not disputing that at all, we actually don't know if its current is bigger or smaller because it's getting a bigger share, yes, but it's getting a bigger share of a smaller current. So we actually don't know what's happened to the current overall. So how would you explain this? Well, my explanation starts off pretty much the same. Surroundings get dark, 
light and density drops, resistance increases, and that causes the current from the cell to decrease. This is a little bit I've added in there. Okay, so we're definitely drawing a smaller current because we've got a bigger resistance. So now what we're going to do is focus on the variable resistor. So using V equals IR, if the current through the variable resistor decreases, potential difference across the variable resistor must decrease because its resistance hasn't changed. So we're getting a smaller voltage drop across the variable resistor, but we've got the same EMF. So therefore the potential difference across the bulb must increase as the EMF is unchanged. And therefore its brightness is going to increase. We've got a bigger potential difference across it. Its resistance is gonna be the same, still the same light bulb. So we're gonna have a increased brightness. And that's how we'd explain it. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the final problem area. And this is one that really only applies to your A-level pre-U kind of stuff. And it's all to do with redrawing complex circuits. So this is a strategy people just don't use enough. When dealing with complicated looking circuits, anyone who's doing circuits really well tends to start off by redrawing because it makes things much simpler to figure out. So let's have a look at circuit on the left. This is actually what's called a Wheatstone bridge. There's no reason you'd know that. And it looks fairly horrific when you first look at it. Okay, so let's have a look at some incorrect responses when presented with a problem like this. First response, ah, I've never seen a circuit like this, I can't do this question. Um, a very understandable reaction, but one that I think you need to start getting past and start thinking of applying cold logic to these questions. Okay, so not a helpful response, but a very understandable one. Second response, I'm going to just bunk some numbers into an equation and hope that it's correct. Again, this isn't a strategy that's going to get you anywhere, um, however tempting it might be. So let's actually look at a good response to this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to redraw this in a simpler way to look at. So the way I do this is I actually sort of Imagine that there's a charge going around the circuit and I figure out the different pathways the charge can take. So coming out of the long side of the battery, the charge goes along, it gets to A. So the charge could go from A to C and then C to B. So those two are clearly sort of in series with each other. Or it could go A to D and D to B. So those two are kind of in series with each other. And the reason I can describe them as being in series is because no charge is going to go from C to D. And the reason being a voltmeter is an infinite resistor. So 80 and 120 are in series with each other. 480 and 160 are in series with each other in this particular instance. Okay, so redrawing it like this is actually very helpful because it's much simpler to analyze. So let's actually do that. So as I said, the reason we can consider them as in series is because the voltmeter has infinite resistance. If there was a resistor calculated where the voltmeter is, we couldn't do the next stages. Okay, so that's an important thing to bear in mind. Okay. So if we've got two sets of series resistors and we can essentially forget the voltmeters there because no current passes through it, what we can do is we can say this is for essentially two potential dividers. We've got two resistors in series in each case. And then we can calculate the potential either side of where the voltmeter is to find the potential difference. So that's how we're going to approach this problem. Okay, so the potential at A is going to be the potential it starts with, 100 volts, minus the potential drop across the 80 ohm resistor. So that's what I've done in the calculation, and I've used the potential divider equation. So the potential at A is 60 volts, or the energy that each charge is carrying is 60 joules. At B, we're going to have gone through the 480 ohm resistor. So it would be 100 minus the potential drop across that, which comes out as 25. So the voltmeter is going to be reading 35 volts uh, because it essentially measures the change in potential. Okay, so you, what you might be asking is, well, what if we applied it going around the other way in the circuit? Well, we can. So if we go the other way, so we calculate the potential drop across the 120 ohm resistor, we can see the potential A would be at 40. Uh, if we do the same thing going around the other way through the 160 ohm resistor, we can see the potential at B is 75. And we can still see the potential difference is 35. So it actually doesn't matter which way around we go around the circuit, but I usually will do it going from the longer side to the short side. That's why I chose the first method to start with. 
Okay, so either way gives us our potential difference. And redrawing it was really the key to seeing this and then knowing that a voltmeter was an infinite resistor was also important. So then it allowed us to solve the problem. So let's have a look at something like a potentiometer. So if the potentiometer, you can see from the diagram, has a maximum resistance of 100 ohms. Um, so what if it's set on 50%, or essentially set on 50% of its resistance, what is the potential difference across the 50 ohm resistor? So redrawing this is going to be really helpful. So essentially what the potentiometer has done is it split itself in half. So there's half to the left and half to the right. So the 50 ohm resistor is actually in parallel with one of those halves, which is how I've redrawn the circuit on the right hand side. And now we have this circuit. This is actually the same as the potential divider equation question stuff I was looking at earlier. We would combine the two 50 ohm resistors together and get 25 ohms actually. And then we've got three resistance series. We can use the potential divider equations to solve that. So we've turned it into a solvable problem by redrawing it, which is much more helpful. Okay, so let's do the same thing, but with the potentiometer set to 0%. What is the potential difference across the 50 ohm resistor now? So again, let's redraw it. So because it's on the left-hand side, you've got nothing to the left, which is what the 50 ohm is in parallel with, and you've got the 100 to the right. So it looks like this. So actually in this instance, the potential difference across the 50 ohm resistor is going to be zero, because the total resistance of that section of parallel resistors is nothing. If you calculate it, you'll end up doing uh, one divided by infinite or something approaching infinity. Uh, so you'll end up with actually nothing and therefore you get no potential difference. So again, by redrawing it, it turns it into a very solvable problem and we can just apply the simple laws of circuitry to it.